Hello everybody. I am really happy today because this morning I really got my vitamin D and it gives me a lot of energy. I got up this morning with Stephanie when she had to go to work and we had a nice breakfast together and a little devotional time. And then I went down to the Amoco State Park, that island, uh, Amoco Island, and just walked around for a little while. And I took my Bible with me, and uh, it almost seemed like no one was there. And I just was walking through the pathway, surrounded by the woods with the Delaware River and Rancocas Creek on one side of me, and uh, just walking around in nature. And all that I was hearing were the sounds of birds chirping. I saw a, a little goldfinch. Uh, I saw a, the flapping of big wings really close to me. And I looked up, and there goes a blue heron flying overhead. And... Uh, hearing the bugs buzz and chirp and all of those wonderful sounds, watching the water that was almost as still as glass and just very calm. And this spirit of calmness was over me. And the sun shining and uh, gentle breezes blowing. It was cool still in the morning. And I opened my Bible and began to read one of my favorite portions is the 139th Psalm. I thought I might talk just a little bit about a few of the verses, and I hope that you'll get the Bible out and look at Psalm 139, which is one of the greatest psalms of a reflection of this psalmist upon how close God is to us. It starts out with these, uh, these words, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me, you know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways, even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. God is not far away from us. God is not like an old man that lives in a place called heaven somewhere in the sky that's so far away you can't see and he's looking and listening from way way off no this is saying oh lord you have searched me you know me you know everything about me you you know my thoughts even before they've come god is so intimately connected with us i mean who made human tissues and sinews and the synapses firing into human brain. Who made all of these wonderful things? God did. There were some old prayers that went this way. O oh Lord, who is nearer to us than our own breath, closer than our own hands and feet. In fact, we can say that God is closer to us than we are to ourselves because God understands everything about us. The psalmist said, you know when I sit down, you know when I rise up, you're acquainted with all my ways, and even before a word is on my tongue, you know it all together, which should give us great confidence in prayer, that even if we don't say things right, even if we can't form the words, uh, you know, Jesus invites us to pray, but even if we can't form the words very well, God already understands those words. God already knows our thoughts from afar, even when we're grappling. Have you ever uh, had an opportunity to try to, uh, to talk to somebody and you just can't remember the words that you wanted to say? You know what you're trying to say, but your mind is just not firing at the moment. Well, God already knows, and that's why Paul said that we can pray with confidence, even though we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit prays for us with words too deep, groans too deep for words, with groans that are just too deep for words. That's the confidence. How God, how close God is to us. The psalmist continues in verse 4 and 5 to God, you hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's so high I cannot attain it. You know, God is not distant from us. God is very close. Now, you turn on the news, there's a lot of bad news. You turn on the news and you're getting just a, a, a small microscopic view of something that's going on in the world. And sometimes the news where the cameras are focused on the people that are full of anger and riots that are going on or on the coronavirus. These things are very disturbing to us. But just sit back for a little bit. Maybe take a walk out in nature like I did. And you'll find out that God is nearer to us than we are to ourselves. In fact, the psalmist continues in verse 7 and 8. 
where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the Sheol, the darkness below, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle in the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will hold me fast. What about when it gets dark? What about when you experience one of those dark nights of the soul, one of those moments in which you feel all is lost and your prayers are just hitting the ceiling and bouncing back, or maybe there's no one really hearing your prayers at all. It says, if I say surely, verse 11, if I say surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you and the night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. I hope you'll just take a few moments and maybe open your Bible to Psalm 139 and read at least those first 12 verses. I'm going to do another podcast on some more of the verses later as we progress through this psalm, but I just wanted to leave you with a thought. God is nearer to you than you are to yourself, and God is more concerned about your success because God loves you so much than you are for your own success. God loves you. God cares for you. God is near you. Thanks be to God.